Photosynthesis is a concept we have been learning from lower classes. It is the process through which plants are able to make food for themselves. So a green leaf uses water and carbon dioxide uh, in the presence of sunlight is able to produce starch and it releases oxygen gas. The knowledge that we have about photosynthesis was not a miracle. It was due to years and years of research by a score of scientists. In this video, we are going to be focusing on five scientists whose contributions helped us understand about photosynthesis the way it is today. So the first scientist we are going to talk about is Joseph Presley. He is the one who discovered the importance of air or gases in the process of photosynthesis. So what he found out was the essential role of air in the growth of green plants. He used a specific experimental setup. He filled a glass tray with water. Uh, there was a small island on it to hold different objects. So initially he used a lit candle which was then covered by a glass jar. Uh, this was also called as the bell jar experiment. Um, within the dome, after some time, he noticed that the candle got extinguished. He tried to light the candle again without essentially lifting the uh, bell jar. So he did this by using a magnifying glass. So he focused the sunlight onto the extinguished candle to try to light it again. But he was unable to do so. He repeated the experiment again, but this time he put a mouse onto the island. He realized that after some time, the mouse had died. In the next experiment, he placed both the mouse and a lit candle under the glass jar and he wanted to see what happens. He noticed that after some time, the candle got extinguished, but the mouse was also dead. Based on a series of experiments and with his limited knowledge of science at that point, he concluded that when we burn a candle or when an animal breathes the air, they damage the air. In the next experiment, he took an extinguished candle and this time he introduced a mint plant into it. He very carefully tried not to open the bell jar completely and slid the plant inside. He then proceeded to light the candle uh, using the magnifying glass. Now he noticed that the candle did not get extinguished and somehow the candle that he had lit continued to burn. In the next experiment, he again took a lit candle which got extinguished after some period of time. He then introduced the mint plant inside and also the mouse. He lit the candle once again. He was surprised by his observation. He noticed that the candle continued to burn, the mouse continued to live inside and the plant was also alive inside the bell jar. He hypothesized that whatever component of the air was damaged by the lit candle or the... The next scientist is Jan Ingenhaus. And he was the one who discovered the importance of sunlight for the process of photosynthesis. To establish this, he had used an experimental setup similar to that of Presley. So he had taken a glass beaker and filled it with water. He placed spacers at the bottom of the glass beaker and he put a piece of plant into the water. This piece was then covered by a glass funnel, which was in turn covered by a, a glass test tube. This experimental setup was then placed in two conditions. One was in sunlight and the other was in dark. He also changed the sample that was inside the water. So he had used green leaves, green branches, as well as non-green parts of the plant. So in one experiment, let's say with the green leaves, he noticed that there were bubbles that were coming out and he observed that the bubbles emerged only in the experimental setup kept in the sunlight and when green leaves and green branches were used. Later, he identified these bubbles to be oxygen. Thus, not only did he establish the importance of sunlight in the process of photosynthesis, he also said that the air bubbles that were released during the process came only from the green parts of the plant. The next scientist was Julian von Sachs, a German plant physiologist. He was the one who found out that when plants grow, they produce glucose. And this glucose is stored in the plants as starch. In his experiment, he took a green plant and covered one single leaf completely with a black paper. He then placed his setup in the sunlight for about 48 hours. He removed two leaves from this plant. One was a covered leaf, another was an uncovered leaf and he then boiled them in water. He removed the leaves and placed them on separate petri dishes. He then washed them with alcohol. At the end of this process, he noticed that the leaves have turned white. This was because the alcohol removed the chlorophyll from the leaves. 
he then added iodine to both the samples and he noticed that one sample there was a color change and in the other sample there was no color change based upon what you know about iodine and its reaction with starch from previous chapters can you guess what happened here so the covered leaf remained colorless whereas the leaf that was exposed to sunlight turned blue black now why did that happen it's because iodine when it reacts with starch gives a bluish blackish color he conducted the same experiment once again but this time instead of covering the entire leaf he covered a portion of the leaf in black paper he then placed the plant in sunlight and repeated the entire experiment after removing the leaf and he noticed that the parts of the leaf that were exposed to sunlight turned blue whereas the covered part remained colorless the next scientist we are going to talk about is t w engelmann he was the first person to discover the action spectrum of photosynthesis action spectrum is a graph that shows the rate of a biological process as it varies with the wavelength of light we will learn more about the action spectrum of photosynthesis in another video for now let's talk about how it was discovered engelmann used a huge glass beaker which was filled with water he then placed a cladophora inside it cladophora is a green algae this setup was placed in the sunlight he then added aerobic bacteria to the algae aerobic bacteria is usually used to detect the site of oxygen evolution because they are aerobic they tend to move towards regions where oxygen is produced he then changed the way in which the sunlight was falling on this setup so instead of just allowing the sunlight to directly fall on it he started passing the light through a prism and we know that the prism splits the white light into the seven colors or vibgior and then something very interesting started happening he noticed that the bacteria started mobilizing towards specific regions in accordance with the spectrum when you place the color spectrum you notice that it is mostly towards the blue and violet region as well as the red region at that point he had not realized that he has discovered the first action spectrum of photosynthesis by the middle of the 19th century the key features of plant photosynthesis were known we knew that plants could use light energy to make carbohydrates from water and carbon dioxide so if i were to write an equation to represent the total process of photosynthesis it would look something like this so carbon dioxide and water in the presence of light gives rise to ch2o and oxygen where the ch2o here represents the glucose scientists still didn't know exactly how plants combined water and carbon dioxide to make sugar and release oxygen so a milestone contribution to understand photosynthesis was made by the microbiologist cornelius van neel he was the first one to figure out that photosynthesis is a light dependent redox reaction a redox reaction is a chemical reaction where electrons are transferred between molecules and in that process one of the reactant is oxidized where the other reactant is reduced so let's see how he figured this out he did not work directly on green plants but he worked on purple and green sulfur bacteria so this was back in 1931 so these organisms also undergo photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight but instead of water they use hydrogen sulfide we know hydrogen sulfide as the extremely dangerous gas but it has a rotten egg smell and at the end of the process they release sugar water and sulfur or sulfate depending upon the organism they did not release oxygen so in this entire process the sulfur or the sulfate is the oxidation product photosynthesis for these bacteria can be described using this equation so carbon dioxide plus hydrogen sulfide gives sugar water and sulfur gas in these bacteria the light breaks the hydrogen sulfide into hydrogen and sulfur the hydrogen combines with carbon dioxide to form sugars the hydrogen sulfide is oxidized and the carbon dioxide is reduced to sugar overall a photosynthetic equation can be written as such H2A plus carbon dioxide in the presence of light gives rise to sugar A and water so since the photosynthesis of uh, purple bacteria and that of plants were very similar van neel came up with the idea that in plants uh, maybe the light is used to break up water into hydrogen and oxygen so if i have to write this equation for green plants it would look something like this so water and carbon dioxide in the presence of light gives sugar water and oxygen 
In green plants, water is the hydrogen donor and it gets oxidized to oxygen. Based upon his observations from the purple sulfur bacteria, he inferred that the oxygen that were evolved at the end of the process comes from water and not from carbon dioxide. This was his theory. This was later proved using a radioisotopic technique. Let's see how that was done. So the regular oxygen that we know has atomic number 8, right? And the number of protons and number of neutrons it has is also 8. But there is another form of oxygen which also has atomic number 8, but it has a different number of neutrons. So number of protons here is still 8, but the number of neutrons here is 10. The former is called as a lighter version of oxygen and the latter is called as a heavier version of oxygen. We will use the term oxygen 16 to denote the first type of oxygen and oxygen 18 to denote the second type. And this is the radioisotope of oxygen. So radioisotope is an unstable form of an element that emits radiation because it's trying to uh, become or get into its stable form. And in that process, it gets rid of uh, lots of atoms in a process called as radioactive decay. We know that isotopes are two elements which have the same atomic number, but they have a different mass number, as we see in this case of oxygen. Now let's move on to the experiment. So in the first experiment, he had taken a plant and supplied it with carbon dioxide and water. But you will notice that the oxygen that is part of these two compounds is different. In carbon dioxide, there was a lighter version and in water, there was the heavier version. The result of this experiment was that the oxygen evolved was made up of the heavier version of the oxygen. He repeated the experiment again. And in this experiment, the plant was again given carbon dioxide and water. But this time, the oxygen in them got switched. So the carbon dioxide had the heavier version, but the water had the lighter version. So the result of this particular experiment was that he observed oxygen here had the lighter version of oxygen. So the overall observation is that whatever was the type of oxygen present in the water molecule is what was reflected in the oxygen that evolved in the process. And hence, we prove that the oxygen that is evolved in the process of photosynthesis comes from water and not from carbon dioxide. 